Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum class. This is your teacher Umar Shami for the BSc course of Automotive Electronics EE202. Um welcome to this online lecture. Uh this is the first lecture after the closure of university due to covid 19 i pray to allah that all of my students are in his protection and i pray to allah for the well being of all of my students and their families last time when we met we were in our classrooms we were in our university but then came the awful uh pandemic the corona virus covid 19 pandemic due to which our studies our classroom traditional studies have been halted however to resume with our studies we will inshallah continue with the online lectures um and in that series this is the first lecture so i have made my presentation i will um inshallah i will uh, share my presentation with the students on our whatsapp group and students can provide me feedback regarding the lectures so in our class previously our textbook are as shown we have in total three textbooks first textbook is the understanding automotive electronics and engineering perspective eighth edition by william ribbons second textbook is diagnose and troubleshooting of automotive electrical electronic and computer system sixth edition by james alderman Pearson Education 2012 and our third uh, textbook is the uh, automobile electrical and electronic systems third edition by Tom Denton elsewhere 2004 edition now <clears throat> previously in our class we have done a number of articles as uh, shown as as can be seen our uh, course outline those articles that we have already done in the class they include they include um electrical fundamental concepts these are the articles that we have done already in the class ठीक है, so they include electrical fundamentals and I'm reading from the distributed um, course outline. Uh, we have done electron movement in conductor, units of electricity, <coughs> sources of electricity, circuit, uh, circuit Ohm's law, electric power, Watt's law, uh, circuit fault types, open circuit and short circuit. and uh, measurement of voltage current re uh, resistance calculation of wattage uh, automotive wiring ground wire battery cable jumper cable fuses and protection devices connectors and um, electrical conduit then uh, we have also done wiring schematics and symbols um schematic symbol the igni the ignition switch Uh, relay and relay operation circuit troubleshooting procedure uh, and then we have also done charging system battery construction how a battery works specific gravity causes and types of battery failure battery sizes battery charging battery charge time and the last article that we did in the class was the alternator including principle of alternator operation alternator components and operation alternator output factors 
um in addition we also covered alternator voltage rectification alternator voltage regulation and alternator cooling so this was uh, this was the list of articles that what that which we have already covered in the class after this came the uh, this coronavirus pandemic and now we will resume our studies online and in this context what i want to do is that i want to teach these articles this list will also be provided to all of the students i will share this list i will share the the revised outline course plan due to the um, covid-19 pandemic in amid the online some distance learning odl classes now the articles that i want to cover will include will inshallah include the um electronic fundamentals but uh, article that we will do will be diodes although we have done uh, diodes in our previous course in the previous semester however i will um, i will refresh the memories of my students so i will give a very brief um reteach i will give a very brief um recap of all the important articles so we will do diodes zena diodes high voltage spike protection using diodes diode rating uh light emitting diodes power uh, photodiodes and photoresistance then as a part 2 of the electronic fundamentals we will cover silicon control rectifiers which is also called as scr or thyristors then thermistors we will do inshallah and then three phase rectify bridges transistors uh phototransistors integrated circuits that is ics and transistor gates then um we will do computer fundamentals including computer main components computer functions digital computer programming computer input sensors computer outputs then um we will combine the previous studies and we will study the starting system the starting system in the starting system we will cover cranking starting system is also called the cranking system so so we will cover the cranking circuit motor starter operation how starter motor work types of dc motors because the motor that we will study will be a dc motor so we will have an introduction to the dc motor plus we will study the dc motor in detail and we will look at the uh, types of dc motors then gear reduction starters computer control starters after the cranking system we will come to the ignition system the topics that we will cover in the ignition system uh, will include in, will will include ignition system operation ignition switching and triggering distributor ignition spark plugs coil on plug ignition ignition timing after we after we complete the ignition system we will come to sensors um sensors include strain gauges variable capacitance variable resistance accelerometer air flow sensor hot air flow sensor uh, fluid flow sensor and light sensors and then finally uh, we will do actuators actuators are the outputs so in the actuators we will cover solenoid actuators electronic plungers exhaust gas recirculation so these seven different articles we are, we will cover and please note that i will inshallah produce separate slides for separate articles so we in this slide 
we will find we will cover the electronic fundamentals in this slide i will produce a separate slide a separate slide lecture or a separate video lecture of computer fundamentals then a separate video lecture for starting comma cranking system and a separate video lecture for the ignition system likewise separate video lecture for sensors and actuators so uh, this is what i want to do online so in this lecture or in this uh, online lecture we will cover the fundamental electronics electronic fundamentals theek okay. hai so this is the articles that we want to start and these articles are taken from our chapter number 12 of our textbook and they will cover clo number 3 so let us start with chapter number 12 the first article is semiconductors as you all know that we have done semiconductors in our previous course previous semester however since the author we would like to since the author has rediscussed it so we will read the semiconductor as discussed by this author of this of our new textbook right so now let us talk about <clears throat> semiconductors semiconductors by definition they are neither pure conductors nor are they pure insulators a conductor is a material which will easily allow electron or electronic current or conventional current to pass through it very easily examples of conductors include metals uh, for example gold copper aluminum now why do conductors allow current to pass through if we look at the atomic structure the the valence shell and the conduction shell are overlapping or they are very very close to each other so to make current flow we only need to provide very 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 small amount of energy to the atom this energy will be absorbed by the electron in the valence shell and it will and it will jump into the conduction shell and it will be ready for conduction on the other hand a insulator an an insulator is a material in which there is a large energy gap between the valence shell and the conduction shell so a electron so an electron residing in the in the valence shell if it is provided too much energy only then it will jump from the valence shell into the conduction shell and after this it will be ready for conduction uh, example include wood plastics and so on insulators they do not allow current to flow because it is very difficult to provide to to trans to provide energy to the electron in the valence shell to jump into the conduction shell hence insulators they do not pass current very easily now a semiconductor a semiconductor is a material which allows current to pass through it under certain circumstances or under certain certain conditions examples of semiconductor include germanium and silicon there are a variety of other semiconductor but germanium and silicon are the widely used materials because of their low cost and ease and their availability if we look at a germanium or if we look at a silicon atom we will find if we look at and specifically talking about a uh, silicon atom we will find four electrons in the valence shell so this means that the outermost octet is not complete the outermost shell is not complete 
and there is a tendency that we can provide uh, four additional electrons to the uh, silicon atom. However, with four electrons in the silicon atom, the atom is neutral. There is neither net positive charge, net negative charge. When we add more electrons to the silicon atom just to complete its outermost shell, then it will be ionized. When we provide more atoms, then the total count of electron will be increased and hence the net charge on the atom will be negative. We, and we will discuss this in a later style, slide. Now, a pure silicon or a pure germanium material is of no use to us. We have to add impurities to make it the semiconductor as we would like. And we do this by creating two groups out of the semiconductor material. One group is called the n-type material and the second group is called the p-type material. The n-type material and the p-type material. What is the difference between n-type material and p-type material? In the n-type material, electrons are in excess and in p-type material, the holes or the vacancy for electrons is in excess. Next, now we come to the next slide. The n-type material is silicon or germanium that is doped with an element such as phosphorus, arsenic or antimony, each having five electrons in its outermost orbit. These five electrons are combined with the four electrons of silicon uh, to a total of nine electrons. There is room in the outermost shell of the silicon there is room only for eight electrons to create covalent bonding therefore this leaves that there is only one extra electron now this extra electron is the reason why such material is called a n-type material so in this diagram 12.1 we see silicon atom silicon atom silicon and silicon and we see one, phos one phosphorus atom. Uh, the out of the five phosphorus atom uh, electron, four have created covalent bonding with adjacent silicon atoms, and one electron is now available in excess. This material is called the n-type material because we have excess of one electron. A p-type material is produced by doping silicon with boron or indium. These are uh, these uh, elements are um, yes. So these elements are trivalent elements. That is in indium in boron or indium or in indium we will find three electrons in the outermost shell now when we add them to silicon what will happen that uh, for example let us look at figure number 12.2 silicon atom silicon atom silicon atom silicon atom and in between there is one boron atom the three electrons of the boron have covalent bonded with silicon remaining that there is one vacancy of electron this from this uh, pair could not create a complete covalent bond hence there is a vacancy of electron this is the creation of a p-type material right so now let us come to the next slide the next slide, slide title is diodes Diodes are, as we have done in the last semester, diodes are electronic devices 
which will allow current to flow only in one direction in a diode current always flows into the p time material and out of the n time material so the author in this textbook says that a diode is an electrical one way check valve made by combining a p type material and an n type material the word diode means having two electrodes figure figure number figure number 12.4 uh, shows the construction of a very simple diode we have the anode terminal the anode terminal is always connected to the p type material and we have a cathode terminal the cathode terminal is always connected to the n type material the diode itself is the combination of the p type material and the n type material and this junction it is the place where the n type material and p type material join together and this junction is also called the depletion region when we forward by c diode the depletion region will decrease in the width when we reverse by c diode the depletion region will increase in width and as we go on increasing the reverse bias voltage one voltage will come when the depletion region will 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 touch the bound outer boundaries of the anode and the cathode and what will happen at this time we will get a short circuit and the diode will conduct even when it is reverse bias right in now in the next diagram here here we see a battery the positive of the battery the positive the positive um, the terminal of the battery is connected to p time material and the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the n time material what do we get we get a forward bias diode and we can see that the current is now flowing from the, the from the positive terminal into the p time material and ex, and in the diode the current exits from the n time material into the cathode and from here it returns to the battery now what will happen now what what will happen when we connect the positive terminal of battery to the n time material we will get a reverse bias diode and at this time there will be no current we will have no current flowing in a reverse bias current theek okay. hai so <clears throat> and now the figure number 12.7 figure number 12.7 shows the diode symbol and electrode names here is the diode symbol that the anode terminal and the cathode terminal the anode terminal is always represented by the arrow and whereas this straight line always represents the cathode terminal this arrow shows that the current will always flow uh, into the anode and will it will exit out of the cathode and if we want to make current flow from cathode to anode it will not be possible we will have no current flowing through the cathode into the anode but there is one only one special case when current flows from the cathode to the anode when we experience the uh, diode breakdown when we um, reverse bias the diode to such an excess extent that the depletion region they touch the terminals and hence the diode the, they touch the boundaries of the p time material and n time material and as a result we get a 
breakdown voltage and a reverse current will happen but we always want to prevent such condition right now we come to the next slide right uh yes in the in the next slide we will discuss the properties of a diode so to discuss or to learn the properties of a diode we will perform an a very simple experiment this experiment consists of a voltage source as shown over here um we will uh connect a an ampere meter m ammeter a resistance r and the diode now in the characteristics the diode will either work in the first quadrant or in the second quadrant so let us discuss about this graph this graph discusses the characteristics the voltage current characteristics of a diode on the x axis we have the voltage across the diode and on the y axis we have the current through the diode the diode when it is forward bias it will work in the first quadrant and when the diode is re reverse biased then the diode will work in the third quadrant so therefore in the first quadrant it is written forward characteristics that is forward bias characteristics and in the third quadrant quadrant it is written uh, reverse characteristics or reverse bias characteristics now to forward bias the diode we have to supply output voltage greater than the uh depletion region voltage that is in the case of silicon it is 0.7 volt and in the case of germanium diode it is 0.3 volts so if we want to forward bias a diode if we are using a silicon diode then the external voltage must be greater than the 0.7 volt and if we are using a germanium diode then the external voltage to forward bias the diode must be greater than 0.3 volt and as we increase the voltage we will observe that the current will increase however there will be very small increment in the voltage across the diode so this brings us to the term called knee voltage knee voltage in this book is the same as the edge uh, as the depletion region voltage discussed in our previous course so knee voltage is the same as depletion um, uh, the depletion region voltage and for a and for a uh, silicon diode this knee voltage is equal to 0.7 volt and for germanium diode this voltage is equal to uh, 0.3 volts right now let us come to the third quadrant the third quadrant in the third quadrant we see this very small blue line almost constant very close to the x axis so this tells us that the reverse bias current is very very small so small that it is in microampere so small that it cannot be measured by our normal voam meters the volt ohm ampere meters they don't measure microampere however when we increase the reverse voltage so that the depletion region touches the boundaries at that time we get a current in the opposite direction which is tending towards minus infinity this happens at breakdown voltage and how do we get this we first of all we reverse bias or we reverse connect the polarity of the external power supply we re we reverse the connections so we reverse by the diode and then we increase the voltage strength 
to so much extent that the depletion region now touches the boundaries of the diode and as a result we get a very large current or breakdown voltage happens however in normal diode we would like to prevent this event we don't like this event to occur we would like to prevent such events <clears throat> So this was the diode characteristics uh, as of this slide. Now let us come to the next slide. Diode ratings. Title of the slide is diode ratings. Uh, specifications. Most diodes are rated according to the following. Maximum current maximum current flow that how much current max how, how how much maximum current can flow when the diode is forward biased second diode are sized and rated according to the amount of current they are designed to handle in forward bias direction this rating is normally from 1 to 5 ampere for most automotive applications However, uh, since this author is discussing electronics for automotive application, therefore, the author has written that this rating is normally 1 to 5 ampere for automotive application. However, we can get diodes uh, even ranging even in kilo amperes. And then the third specification is the PIV, which stands for peak inverse voltage. This is the voltage that this is the reverse voltage that the volt that the diode can withstand or without being physically damaged now in the second paragraph the author has listed five very popular diodes which have maximum current of 1 ampere and link capacity and their respective peak inverse voltages are written so for example the first in the first example the diode model this 1 and 401 this is the diode model this diode model this diode model first of all it can carry 1 ampere then 4001 is the model number for which the peak inverse voltage is only 50 ampere 50 volts 50 volts so the diode model 1 and 4001 can only withstand a reverse bias voltage maximum up to 50 volt now let us come to the second example the diode model is 1 and 4002 again this diode this diode can also only handle 1 ampere but this time it but this model it can handle up to 100 100 volts it can handle up to 100 volts likewise 1 and 403 can handle 1 ampere at 200 volt piv 1 and and 1 and 4004 can handle up to 400 ampere and 1 and 4005 can handle up to for uh, 600 600 volt PIV now in the in all diode what does what does what does this what does this one and mean this one and means that the diode has one PN junction This one end means that this diode, this device only has one uh, PN junction. So naturally, if an electronic device only has one PN junction, it is just a simple diode. It is not a transistor or any other device. Right, so next slide. Next slide is Zener diodes. 
Zener diodes are first of all essentially Zener diodes are our normal PN junction diode but they are used they are always used in reverse bias condition in a Zener diode um, we use the, the uh, Zener diode in reverse bias condition so a Zener diode a wait A Zener diode is a specially constructed diode designed to operate a reverse bias current. Since it is used in reverse bias condition, therefore it will always operate with the reverse bias current. Zener diodes are named uh, were named in 1934 for their inventor Clarence Malvin Zener, an American professor of physics. So a Zener diode, a Zener diode acts as a diode in that it blocks reverse current, but only up to a certain voltage. This certain voltage is of highly of high importance. We will come to this certain voltage again. Above this certain voltage, called the breakdown voltage or the Zener region, a Zener diode will conduct current in the opposite direction without damage to the diode to the diode a zener diode is heavily doped and reverse bias voltage do not harm the material the voltage drop across a zener diode remain potentially the same before and after based on voltage and this factor makes a zener diode perfect for voltage regulation so zener diodes uh, biggest application is voltage regulation so let us look at the characteristics of a Zener diode uh, in figure. Um, yes, uh, in figure, tw figure 12.8 shows the Zener diode symbol. So there is just a very sm small amount of difference in the symbol. The terminals are named the same cathode and anode. However, we will operate the diode in reverse condition therefore reverse current in the opposite direction will flow now coming to the characteristics uh, the characteristic of a zener diode look very familiar or very similar to a normal diode that is on the x axis is the voltage on the y axis is the current on the um, in the first quadrant the diode is forward bias but since this is a special diode, the Zener diode will always be used in the third quadrant where it is reverse bias. We, will, we can use Zener diode as a normal diode. However, they are not produced to be used in forward region. Zener diode are produced or manufactured so that they are always operated in the reverse bias condition or in the third quadrant. So, this is why we see a lot of activity for Zener diode in the third quadrant. We see a current IZ minimum and then IZ maximum. The Zener diode current minimum and maximum they are found from the, the data sheet of the, manuf the manufacturer provided data sheet. VZ represents the Zener breakdown voltage and VZ is one major specification of a Zener diode. So if we are using a Zener diode of 10 volt, that means that when we provide voltage equal to 10 volt, a reverse bias voltage equal to 10 volt or larger than the 10 volt, at that time the Zener diode will experience a short circuit and the voltage across the diode will be equal to 10 volt if we are using 
zener diode of 10 volts this is the meaning of zener diode minus vz and uh, let us look at what is the meaning of vf 0.3 or 0.7 over here this means that if we are using the zener diode in the forward bias condition then if the zener diode is made up of of germanium then the forward bias voltage of zener diode is only 0.3 volt and if we are using a zener diode of made up of silicon material then the voltage drop of the zener diode is equal to 0.7 volts okay yeah. so now we will come to the next slide the next slide shows a example circuit example application of the zener diode here we are using a battery of 9 volts a series resistance of 33 ohms and a zener diode such that the zener diode is uh, being used has a voltage of 5.1 volt it this means that this is vz this is this is equal to v z v z is equal to 5.1 volt and the output voltage will be regulated that is we will have a regular maintained output voltage nearly equal to 5 volt so this means that if we vary the voltage input voltage the output voltage will remain fixed due to our zener diode characteristics due to the this is the benefit of using a zener diode however we must not forget that uh, to get 5 volt the minimum voltage applied to the, from the battery side should be larger than this voltage v battery should be larger than v z in this case v battery should be larger than 5.1 volt and um in the and in the case of uh, automobiles uh we are using 12 volt battery therefore there are chances that uh, maybe the voltage increases therefore the most uh, mostly used zener diode in automobile will have a zener volt vz equal to 12 volt right so uh, now class let us um, finish over here let us finish the first part of the electronic fundamentals when we will stop over here the and we will finish the first part um i will make a new lecture where we will continue with the slides however please remember that um, after listening to the videos please also read the textbook the reading from the textbook is essential it is essential for your understanding for your learning and the book reading is highly essential for your uh, understanding okay so thank you very thank you very much for your time thank you very much for listening to me allah taala aap sab ko apni hifz mein rakhe aapka bahut bahut shukriya assalam alaikum ji